Hey Biology 400, this is Mr. Gales and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to prepare your pH lab report. You're of course going to be using the data that we collected in the pH lab in class just today and so what I want to do is go through with you what you're going to need to do in terms of writing up that data and, and, and the kinds of things you need to include in your report. So I'm going to start off with this. What you see on the screen here is my title page and the title page is pretty simple. We're going to start off with uh, the title of the lab, in this case it was the pH lab. Then you're going to have a related graphic. I just went out on Google and I typed in pH and I looked at the images. I found an image that I like. You might recognize this one. It's from the presentation we've uh, used in class. Uh, and then just copy and paste that in. And then information at the bottom of the, of the title page would include uh, your name, your class, the period you're in, and then the date that the lab will be due. By the way, the lab report format that you'll be working off of for Biology 400 is in your Crocoduck packet. So we're going to refer to, this is called the Biology 400 lab report format, and it's in that beginning of the year Crocoduck packet. Um, you're only going to be doing a few parts of the lab for this particular lab write-up, but nonetheless you can use that as a reference for uh, future consideration. Okay, so how you, what are you going to do after you've got your title page, your second page, what I want you to do for this particular lab report is to include the problem statement and the hypothesis. And those two were given to you in the lab document. The problem statement was how do organisms survive and function despite metabolic activities that tend to shift pH toward either acidic or basic ends of the scale. Okay, so you've got that. All you need to do is type it up and put it in. Now one note, your for, your format for your report should look pretty similar to what you see on the screen here. So your, your sections, the problem statement, the hypothesis, the data, those section headings should be bolded. Okay, uh, the font, you know, Calibri is what comes up as a default. If you want to use Times New Roman or Tahoma or Arial, that's fine. I just would ask you to not use some crazy cursive or hieroglyphic type font that makes it impossible to read. And in terms of the size of the font, 12 point is just about perfect. Hypotheses. Uh, in this case, we have two of them, uh, and these also were given to you in the lab report document or the lab document. The first one is if an acid or base is added to a liquid, then there will be a shift in the pH of that liquid. And the second one, if an acid or base is added to a liquid containing a buffer, then there will not be a shift in the pH of that liquid. Now think back to what you learned in the scientific inquiry unit. You ought to be able to determine what the independent and dependent variables were for this lab. And then, of course, that comes into play as we're working on graphing the data later on. All right, so that's it. Those, those two things, that's what you're going to start off with. And then we're going to move into data. Now, we'll be collecting class average pH values uh, in class. And so Mr. Workman and I will be sending you via email an Excel workbook that's got the class average data table in it. So I'm going to jump over to Excel and show you what that is going to look like. This is some sample data from a previous class, and I'm going to show you what you need to do with these, uh, the data table and then how to create the charts from the data table. So if we go back to the PH Lab document, it says copy and paste the Excel data table here. So I'm just simply going to highlight all the cells in that data table and right click and do copy. Go back to my PH Lab document and I'll highlight that to get rid of it and just paste it in. Okay, and there's your data table. It's easy as that. Uh, the next thing that you need to do in the data section is to complete chart one and copy and paste it in. Chart one is going to look at the effect of adding hydrochloric acid to the four solutions that we used. So I'm going to give you a brief rundown on how to do that using Excel. You may be uh, experienced using Excel and this may be a little simple for you. You can always go and customize it the way that you'd like to, but I'm going to show you sort of the basic way that your chart should look. By the way, in Excel, what we normally would call a graph is referred to as a chart. All right, so I'm going to go back to Excel and we're going to begin by looking at the effect of adding acid to four solutions. And so here are four solutions, distilled water, egg, liver, and buffer and this was adding acid to them. So I'm going to highlight the data that I want to include, which would be all of that data there. And then I'm going to go up to the menu across the top and go to the Insert tab and Insert Chart Line Chart. I'm going to select a 2D chart with markers to, to use. Okay, And you'll see that you get a very basic line chart that way. Now, um, I am going to suggest that 
that what you do with this chart when you get this chart rather than having it be an object right here in this uh, sheet just right click on it and then select where it says move chart okay and we're going to put that in as a new sheet and it allows you to change the name so we're just going to call that the effect of acid okay and you click OK and that will create a, a new page so that this chart takes up an entire page and we can just tab back and forth. Here's now the tab that has the data. Now we can tab back to that chart. Now the chart is not complete. We need a title and we need to label our axes. So we're going to go over here to where it says chart layouts and we're going to select from the chart layouts. The best one for this particular chart is layout 10. So I'm going to select that. That allows you to have a title and the axes labeled here. So how do you do that? Well, it's pretty simple. You're just going to click on there. I don't need the fill. You just click on where the chart title is, and you highlight that, and you can put in your own title. So this one was the effect of adding acid to four solutions. Okay. Now, a word about your titles. Uh, all major words in a title should be capitalized, and obviously, please make sure that you use spell check or that you double check your spelling on those. All right, title is done. Uh, come down here to my axes. Now, remember that the independent variable goes on the x-axis, and the dependent variable goes on the y-axis. And if you think it through carefully, the dependent variable would be adding acid, so the number of drops of acid that we've added. So we're going to highlight the data or the, the title area that we're going to put in there and we're just going to do drops of HCl hydrochloric acid and then over here we're going to highlight that and uh, just do a backspace to get rid of that and what we're looking at on the y-axis of course is just pH right the pH is dependent on the number of drops of hydrochloric acid that we added in this situation. Now, you can customize this a little bit. Um, I'm just going to show you a, a simple way to change the chart style. So if you don't like the way this looks, you can make it a little bit more custom for yourself. Here where it says chart styles, if you select this bottom button, it'll give you several different styles to work from. Um, so for instance, here I can choose this one. It's got nice bold lines and bold uh, markers for the data. Okay, so that's it. That's how easy it is to create the graph or the chart in this case for the effect of adding acid to four solutions. So what are you going to do with it now? Well, it's pretty simple. You're going to take it and you're going to copy the chart, go back over to your pH lab document, and you're going to paste it in. Now, I, I'm pretty much out of space here. So what I'm going to do is just hit a few returns down, go to the next page, and I'll just paste it in here. Okay, and there it is. It looks nice. It's complete. Everything's on there correct. Uh, so that's it for that first chart. Now the second chart that you'll need to do is the effect of adding sodium hydroxide to four solutions. And you're going to create that using the same process that we used for the effect of adding acid to four solutions. This one will simply be called the effect of adding base to four solutions. Okay, so we go back over to our Excel. We're going to want to select our data and now we're going to highlight the data that relates to the drops of base just like this. We go up to insert and we go to charts. We're going to insert a line chart and I want to insert the 2D line chart with markers. Okay. I'm going to take that. I'm going to right click on the chart and select move chart and I want to put it as a new sheet and I'm going to call it the effect of base. Click OK and that'll save it as its own sheet. All right and then remember we're going to go to chart layouts. We're going to select layout 10 because that's got what we want. We want the title and we want the axes to be labeled. So again this is the effect of adding base to four solutions. You've got your drops of NaOH and then over here we have our pH. Once you've got all that you're going to right click and copy take it over to your pH lab document and you can paste that right in there and that's it for the data two more sections to go the analysis section um, you were given the six analysis questions for the lab in the lab document in class 
So that's what you're going to put in here. You're going to answer the analysis questions from the lab. Please use complete sentences. Refer to the data as is required. I oftentimes get students who ask the question, do I need to rewrite the question? You don't need to rewrite the question, but if you're writing a complete sentence, the question should serve as the root of your answer. So please make sure you're doing that. Also, please present your answers as a numbered list. It's not going to be one paragraph with six answers in it. Each question should have its own number that corresponds to it. All right, finally, the conclusion. Uh, the conclusion is sometimes the most important and oftentimes the most difficult part of the lab. It's where you bring all of the data together and refer back to your hypothesis. You're either going to support or reject it based on the, the data. Uh, it can, should consist of meaningful statement or set of statements that make connections between the concepts taught in class and the problem or question posed in the lab. Uh, please write the conclusion in your own words using key terms from the unit. You know, so use some of the vocabulary that we've been using. Um, Make sure that you're using complete sentences, proper grammar. Support your statements with data that was acquired during the lab. You've got the, the data table and the two charts, so refer to data when you're drawing your conclusions. Take the time needed to analyze the lab and make sure that you include the proper terms. Uh, the conclusion should follow the seven steps that are listed here. In this case, please write the conclusion as a paragraph or a series of paragraphs. This list of seven things is just there to kind of guide you in terms of making sure that you have everything that you need in your conclusion. So how are you going to do this? Well, the first thing that you should do in your conclusion is restate the question of the problem of the experiment. That's very simple because you have the problem statement right up here at the top. Okay. All right, next, uh, in about two sentences, just very briefly summarize what you did in the experiment. You did the experiment. You were actively engaged in conducting the experiment, so just summarize it. Just lay it out there very simply. For number three, you're going to restate the original hypothesis, and then you're going to use the data or the patterns that you identified in the analysis section to either support or reject the hypothesis. In the case of the pH lab, you actually have two hypotheses. So this, this third component to the conclusion is going to be a little bit longer because you have to address both of them. Uh, the fourth section in the conclusion is error analysis. What we're looking at here is we'd like you to identify what are some techniques or problems, accidents you might have had, timing issues, what could have possibly contributed to error in your lab. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're wrong, it's just you want to be aware of the kinds of things that could have changed your data. Now the other thing is Mr. Workman and I are going to ask you to use class average data rather than just your own data you might want to consider here why using class average data would be beneficial and explain that. All right, the fifth part, explain how the experiment's related to what we're studying. Uh, this is where you really add in some of your uh, vocabulary that you've learned, the, the keywords that you've learned in the unit. Uh, tie it in with what we learned in class. Six is a statement regarding something that you learned, something new that you learned or a new perspective that you gained regarding the content of the lab. It could be something as simple as a skill that you learned, something that you've never done before, a new skill that you developed. Um, it could be some new concept that you learned that was uh, presented in this lab. In any case, pick something new and explain what you learned regarding that new concept. And then finally, include an idea about a future experiment by explaining what you would do, what would you change? Would you change a variable? Would you test other items? Or how could you further explore this topic? This is where you get to be creative and think about how you might, again, approach the problem statement in a different way. And please give some sort of reasoning for your answer on this. All right, so that's it. That's going to be your lab report for the pH lab. I know that it looks like a lot, but it really, there's not a whole lot that you need to worry about doing. The, the analysis questions and the conclusion are probably the most difficult thing. Um, but you've got a, a nice, clear format to follow on that. Okay? So, as always, Mr. Workman and I will be available for you if you've got questions or if you need some help in creating the charts or in formatting. Um, we'll provide you with the, the due date for this lab. We'll let you know when that's going to be. And as I mentioned earlier, we will be emailing you the class average data in a workbook, Excel workbook, so that you can easily take that and, and from that data create your charts that you need to. Okay? All right, this is Mr. Gale signing off. Thank you for your time, and uh, good luck.